Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So um, today I'm here to do part two of my Ho Holbein Botanical Watercolour Palette setup video. So I did the setup in part one and now I'm back to do part two which is going to be the palette swatching. So I'm going to just explain what I'm using. So I've got my palette all set up here. Um, I have my whole buying watercolours here, including the four extra ones. I've just laid the tubes out there. I have my swatch card all set up, and this is all set up to be the right size to fit with the palette. Um, and it's set up so it's kind of, you've got the colours going all the way around like this on the on the page. Sorry, I just dipped my finger in the Payne's Grey. And the paper I've used to create this swatch card is the Canson Moulin de Roy. It's 100% cotton. A this is the A4 size, it's cold press, 300 GSM or 140 pounds. And it's a really affordable cotton watercolor paper. So I'll have this and everything else linked below this video. Um, in case you didn't see part one or the whole video where I sh showed these watercolors, I got the Holbein Botanical set, which is this cover. I got this from a website called Bayi or rather through them and they are act as kind of like an intermediary so you buy from Japanese websites through them and then it gets shipped to their warehouse and then they ship it to you. Um, doing all of that was made this purchase significantly cheaper than it would have been any other way. The only place I can find this in the UK is on eBay and this set goes for a lot of money on eBay and it's re really overpriced compared to how much these watercolours sell for in Japan. So I will leave a link to buy down below and then you can go through them to order it from the Japanese Amazon. Um, I get nothing from it. It's not an affiliate link or anything. I'm just letting you know how I got hold of it. Um, there was a discount at the time. I don't know if there is one right now, um, but you can sign up for free. Setting up the account doesn't cost you anything. You literally just pay for the product and the shipping to get it to you. And doing all of that meant it was significantly cheaper than if I bought it from eBay. Okay, so the paintbrush I'm going to use today is a size 2 Princeton Snap brush. It's just a synthetic, really good brush. And it's quite a small brush, but because my swatches are going to be quite small spaces, I didn't want to have um, the colours blend into each other too much. Okay, so this set comes with 24 colours, but my palette has 28 wells. So I actually added four additional colours to it, and I've marked those on my swatch card with an asterisk so I can let you know when we get to them that, that those colors aren't from the original set. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the yellows and work my way around. I have my water off to the side so you can't see it, but it's there. And we're gonna start with the cadmium lemon yellow or yellow lemon as they call it. And cadmiums tend to be quite opaque. So we'll see how this one swatches. And again, I'm gonna try and do like a graded wash, although there's not as much space for that on these cards. So I'll start with a more, a stronger color at the top, and then rinse off my brush and grade it out. So cadmium uh, yellow lemon is PY35 is the pigment. That is a cadmium yellow pigment. And yeah, you can just tell that it is slightly more opaque than a, non, a non-opaque watercolour. Then we have imidazolone yellow, which is PY154. And this is a really lovely sort of mid-yellow colour. I kind of prefer this as my cool, quote unquote cool yellow. I, I don't really use lemon yellow very often, or at all, even in my work. Um, I don't know, I just don't find it a particularly useful colour for me, but because it's part of this set, I wanted to include it on the palette and hopefully I will learn to like it. <laughs> um, then we have Cadmium Yellow Deep as our third colour, and this again has that PY35 Cadmium Yellow shade, or pigment rather, and it's also mixed with PO20, which is a Cadmium Orange pigment. It's a nice, richer, warmer yellow. Next up we have quinacridone gold, which is the first of the additional colours that I added to this palette because I absolutely love quinacridone gold and 
I don't want a palette that doesn't have it. I really like this as a warm yellow slash orange colour on my palettes. I often won't have a traditional orange just because it's not really a colour I gravitate to very often and if I need it it's very easy to mix with red and yellow. But I do love a Quin Gold. And washed out, this Quinacridone Gold is made with PO48 and PY150. So PY150 is nickel as a yellow and PO48 is usually known as quinacridone burnt orange. So it's a really lovely warm colour. Next up we have Vermilion Hue. Now I don't think any paint is made with original vermilion anymore, it's quite a toxic colour, a toxic pigment. So most vermilions that are available now are hues, which just means it's a colour made up of other pigments to look like the original colour. It's a lovely rich orangey red. Again, it's not really a shade I use a huge amount, but it's nice to have. A little bit more on the orange side. So it's made up of three pigments, PO73, PR254 and PY110. So it's got an orange, a red and a yellow pigment in it. Seems a bit excessive, <laughs> to be honest, but anyway. Then next up we have Pyrrole Red, which is a single, single pigment PR254. Which I, incidentally is one of the pigments used in the vermilion as well. This is a lovely, very pigmented, rich red. On the, slightly on the warmer side. But I really like it, it's a nice sort of fire engine red colour. Then next up we have the first of a couple of fugitive pigments in this set and that is Opera. So Opera is a very popular colour but it's also incredibly fugitive because it's um, it's got some fluorescent pigments in it and fluorescent pigments aren't light fast. So this one is 100% fugitive which basically all it means is it fades over time. But Oh, this opera pigment's made with BV10, which is the fluorescent pigment, and PR122, which is quinacridone magenta usually. And that colour is light fast. So with opera, what happens when it fades is it doesn't fade to nothing. It just fades to a duller pink colour. So some people still choose to use it and live with the risk that their painting might fade a little bit. But, um, you know, at least it doesn't fade to nothing. Okay, so next up we have Crimson Lake, which is made up of three pigments, which is made up of PR177, which is an anthraquinoid red, it's a colour I really like, uh, PR122, which we just mentioned is quinacridone magenta usually, and a PV19 pigment. Now which version of that, which shade of PV19 it is, I'm not sure. Um, but it's a lovely sort of violety red colour. Okay, next up we have PR83, which is the original alizarin crimson pigment, and this is another very highly fugitive colour. And this one does basically fade to nothing, essentially, from my understanding. I've pretty much always stayed away from PR83, I've never bought a original alizarin crimson pigment purely for that reason i've always bought the permanent variety but worth i'm interested to give this one a go it's a lovely shade of it's a lovely pinky pinky red shade and then next to that we have permanent alizarin crimson which wasn't originally part of this set but like i said i added it to use on works that i think may potentially go on a wall or be sold instead of using the carmine okay and that was made up of pv19 and pbr25 okay next up we have quinacridone violet which is pv19 so like i said that pv19 pigment can create a variety of different shades this is quite a purplish violety colour, as the name would suggest. It's more of, definitely more of a red leaning violet than a blue leaning violet. 
It's not my favorite shade on its own, but it's a lovely shade to mix with. Okay, and the last one on this row is Cobalt Violet Light PV47. And again, this is a bit of a more opaque color. But it's a lovely shade. So it's like a, like a lavender or wisteria type of color. I can see how this is a nice color to use in floral painting, botanical painting. Okay. And next up we have Bright Violet and this is another fugitive pigment. This is another one with fluorescent um, pigments in it. So this has BV7 and BV15, so two fluorescent pigments. And then next up we have Permanent Violet, which in other brands is known as Dioxazine Purple or Dioxazine Violet. It's a very dark, rich purple, violet purple shade. It's very, it's like a very blue leaning purple. I actually really like using this shade to darken greens sometimes. It's a very quick way to get a nice dark greens to mix this color with a sap or a hooker's green. And it's quite a strong color as well, so you don't need a lot of it for mixing. It can quickly overtake in a mix as well. Okay, then next up we have Indigo, which is another colour I added to this palette. It's not a colour that naturally, that originally comes in this palette. But I just really love Indigo, and this one is made up with PB15, which is a phthalo blue shade, PVK6, which is a black pigment, and PR122, which is quinacridone magenta, as we spoke about before, is a red pigment. Really lovely inky blue. Okay, and then next up we have Prussian Blue, which is probably one of my favourite blue colours. Um, it's PB27. I love this colour, I love mixing with it, I love the greens you get mixing this colour with yellows. Um, it's just such a lovely colour and it can be a really rich, dark sort of mass tone at the at its darkest and washes out to a really lovely lighter blue. It's just got such a variety of tones. If I could only pick one blue to paint with, it would be Prussian blue. Okay. So next up we have Cobalt Blue, which is PB28. I forgot the best way to do this so I don't get my finger hand in paint. Cobalt colours like cadmiums can be a little bit more on the opaque side. Um, and they are, they typically are a bit more on the granulating side as well. So ultramarine blue is next, that's PB29, so another single pigment. It's a lovely warm blue. Okay, so next up we have peacock blue, which is the last of the colours that I added to the set. And this is like a turquoise colour, it's a mix of PG7, which is Thalo Green, and PB15, which is Thalo Blue, and it's a lovely, rich, turquoisey colour. And next up we have Cerulean Blue, and this is a true Cerulean, it's PB35, lovely sky colour. It's a lovely light blue with lots of granulations, it's really fun to use for painting skies and landscapes. And then finally for the blues we have Payne's Grey, lovely deep dark colour. Similar to the indigo uh, with the pigments, just the um, order's a little bit different, it's a little bit darker, more grey than indigo. So this one is made up with PBK6, the black pigment, uh, PB15, phthalo blue and PR122. So the same pigments, just a different order which means used they have different amounts of each pigment. Then we have Permanent Green Number 1, which is not a shade I would normally go for, but it's made up of PY3, PY53, and um, PG7. So it's made up of two yellow pigments and green, so phthalo green. It's very much like a May green kind of colour. It was a very unnatural sort of green, but I can imagine it would be a good mixer to get different shades and 
we'll see if I can find a way to use this with my painting. Then next up we have Hooker's Green, um, which is made up of PG7, so again that phthalo green colour, um, PY110 and PY150, which is that nickel as a yellow, so I really like, it sounds like it'll be a good mix. Yeah, so it's a bit more of a blue leaning green, not as warm as a sap green, but it's lovely. It's definitely one of my more preferred variations of Hooker's Green. I'm not usually a fan of Hooker's Green, but I do like this one. This one is definitely a nicer version than some. And then next up we have the Holbein Sap Green, which is PY150, PG7 and PR122. So there's a red pigment in this one as well. It's really lovely warm leaning green. Then we have our earth pigments, we start with yellow ochre, PY42. So yellow ochre can, is usually quite a semi-opaque colour, so we'll see how this one is. This one seems a bit on the opaque side as well. It's a nice mixer to get more muted tones, more muted mixes. Then we have the classics burnt sienna, PBR7. I do like this more, sort of like orangey reddish brown and burnt umber which is also pbr7 i really like burnt umber for like a warmer dark brown i really like using it for mixing <sighs> i'm such a klutz sometimes i always drop my paintbrush on my paintings which is very annoying when you're in the middle of something and you drop your paintbrush on your pa paper but hey happens all the time. Alright, and the last one is Van Dyke Brown, which is pigment NBR8. I don't know what the N stands for, but I guess it's a brown pigment number 8. And again, it's a really nice dark, more cool leaning brown than the burnt umber. Okay, so that's our full set of Holbein watercolours swatched out, the botanical set. Thank you for joining me today. This again took a lot longer than I expected so I'm probably going to keep this as a separate uh, video and then I will do a sort of like a paint with me to test out these colours and see how they work as well and I'll probably do that as a voiceover as like a part three to this little series. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, what do you think of the colours that are in this set, um, is this something that you would be interested in trying out um, and things like that. So yeah, let me know, love to hear from you and have a chat with you down in the comment section. Alright, take care and I'll see you guys in the next, in the next video, bye!